Hello, and welcome to the Registry Partners December 2021 CTR Coding Break, AJCC 8th Edition Summary of Chapter 1, TNM Staging System. The objectives covered in this coding break are AJCC TNM Staging Categories, Rules for Staging, and Classifications. The AJCC TNM staging for each cancer type is put together by defining the size and extent of cancer for the tumor, the T category, the number of nearby lymph nodes that have cancer, the N category, and whether the cancer has spread from the primary tumor to other parts of the body, the M category. For each of the TN and M, there is a set of categories most often defined by a number. Let's look at the example, T1, N2, M0. The description of the anatomic factors is specific for each disease site. These TN and M elements are then combined into prognostic stage groups. Assigning the TN and M categories follows general rules described in Chapter 1, Principles of Cancer Staging, as well as the site-specific chapters within the AJCC 8th edition manual. Rules for staging. There are general rules that apply to the application of TN and M categories for anatomic sites and classifications that are found in the AJCC 8th edition, Chapter 1, Principles of Cancer Staging, and can also be found in detail on page 11 of the AJCC 8th edition Kindle PDF version. Here are the following general staging rules. Microscopic confirmation, time frame, staging window for determining clinical, pathological, post-therapy or post-neoadjuvant therapy, progression of disease or recurrence, uncertainty among TN or M categories and or stage groups, rules for clinical decision making, uncertainty rules do not apply to the cancer registry data, prognostic factor category information, grade, synchronous primary tumors in a single organ or a paired organ, metachronous primary tumors, unknown primary or no evidence of primary tumor, and date of diagnosis. So let's first review the first general rule, microscopic confirmation. Microscopic confirmation is necessary for TNM classification, including clinical classification. In certain clinical scenarios, patients may not have a biopsy or cytology, but still can be clinically staged. An example would be, a patient has a CT abdomen pelvis that reveals a five centimeter kidney tumor. The imaging report states the following, five centimeter tumor limited, limited to the kidney consistent with renal cell carcinoma with no lymphinopathy or other areas of concern. There was a CT abdomen pelvis only performed with no biopsy due to patient declining further diagnostic testing. The clinical stage would be clinical CT1B, CN0, CM0, stage group 1. Moving right along, time frame staging window for determining clinical stage. This is from the date of diagnosis before initiation of primary treatment or decision for watchful waiting or supportive care to one of the following points, whichever is shortest four months after diagnosis, or to the date of the cancer progression, if the cancer progresses before the end of the four-month window, data on the extent of the cancer is included before the date of the observed progression. Time frame staging window for determining pathological stage. This is from the date of diagnosis through surgical resection in the absence of cancer progression. Within four months after diagnosis to the date of the cancer progression, if the cancer progresses before the end of the four-month window, data on the extent of the cancer is included before date of the observed progression. It also includes any information that has been obtained during the patient's diagnostic workup through the completion of definitive surgery as part of the primary treatment if the surgery occurs later than four months after diagnosis and the cancer has not progressed during that time frame. We do want to note, patients who do receive neoadjuvant radiation or systemic therapy before surgical resection will not qualify to have a pathological stage assigned. Time frame staging window for staging post-neoadjuvant therapy or post-therapy. The YC classification should be used when staging after completion of neoadjuvant therapy without subsequent surgical resection 
or after neoadjuvant treatment and before planned surgical resection. The YP classification should be used when staging after completion of neoadjuvant therapy followed by surgery. Progression of disease. If progression of cancer is documented before therapy or surgery, the information obtained prior to the documented progression is used for clinical and pathological staging. Uncertainty among TN or M categories and or stage groups. Rules for clinical decision making. If uncertainty exists regarding how to assign a category, subcategory, or stage group, the lower of the two possible categories, subcategories, or groups is assigned for TN or M and prognostic stage group. And certainly rules do not apply to the cancer registry data. If information is not available to the cancer registrar for documentation of the subcategory, the main umbrella category should be assigned. So let's look at the example below. We would assign a T1 for a breast cancer described as less than two centimeters in place of a T1A, T1B, or T1C. If information to assign the stage group is not available to the cancer registrar, such as subcategories or prognostic indicators required for staging of that primary site, the stage group should not be assigned, but should be placed as a stage group unknown or unstageable. Let's look at the example below. Prostate case that is known that there was no DRE performed and is staged as a clinical CTX, CN0, CM0, stage group 99. And this is due to not being able to assign a clinical T category with no DRE being performed. Please note, if it is unknown if the DRE is performed or the DRE details are unknown, the CT category should be blank. Prognostic factor category information unavailable. Prognostic factors required for stage grouping describes factors that have a strong correlation to prognosis and are included for some primary sites as a category used to determine stage group. Some of the common prognostic factors we often see are PSA and grade group Gleason score for prostate cancer, serum marker, marker levels for testicular cancer, age and histology and thyroid cancer, HER2, ER, PR, and histologic grade for breast cancer. If a required prognostic factor category is unavailable, the category used to assign the stage group is X, or if it is unavailable, it is defaulted to assigning the anatomic stage use clin using clinical judgment by the physician. Grade. The grade is the assessment of the differentiation of the tumor and describes how abnormal the cancer cells and tissues look when compared to the healthy cells. Grade often provides important information on the risk of cancer metastasis and the outcome of the cancer. The recommended histologic grading system for each disease site site, if applicable, is specified in each primary site chapter of the AJCC 8th edition manual. The registrar should document grade for a specific site as defined in the specific primary site chapter. Synchronous primary tumors in a single organ. If multiple tumors of the same histology are present in one organ, the tumor with the highest T category is classified and staged, and the M suffix is assigned. Let's look at the example, PT2 with the M suffix PN0, CM0. Note, the M suffix applies to multiple invasive cancers. It is not applicable for multiple foci of in situ cancer or mixed invasive and in situ cancer. Synchronous primary tumors in a paired organ. Cancers occurring at the same time in each of paired organs are staged as separate cancers. An example would be breast, lung, and kidney. Metachronous primary tumors. Subsequent primary tumors occurring in the same organ or in a different organ outside the staging window and are staged as a new cancer by using the appropriate TN and M primary site chapter. Unknown primary sites or no evidence of primary tumor. If there is no evidence of a primary tumor or the site of the primary tumor is unknown, staging may be based on the clinical suspicion of the organ site of the primary tumor with tumor categorized as T0. Let's look at the example below. A hyalur lymph node positive for metastatic adenocarcinoma suspected clinically to be from a lung primary may have the TN or M categorized as T0 and 1 M0. 
An exception would be the T0 category is not used for squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck since patients with involved lymph nodes are stages unknown primary cancers using the cervical nodes and unknown primary tumors of the head and neck system. Moving down to date of diagnosis. It's important to document the date of diagnosis as the information is used for time periods for staging. The date may be the date the physician determines the cancer clinically, the date of diagnostic biopsy, or evidence of de disease found on imaging. AJCC TNM staging classifications. TNM classification describes the points in time of care of the cancer patient in relation to diagnosis and treatment. Staging classification describes the amount of spread of cancer in the patient's body using the TNM staging. The criteria does include time frame, medical assessments, and practices. So let's first look at the clinical classification. This is information gathered about the extent of the cancer from the date of diagnosis until initiation of primary treatment. The T category. This includes information from clinical history, symptoms, physical exam, labs, imaging, endoscopy, biopsy, and or surgical exploration without resection. The N category includes lymph node evaluation from physical exam, imaging, FNA or core needle biopsy, excisional biopsy, or sentinel biopsy. The M category includes clinical history, physical exam, imaging, FNA, or biopsy of distant site. Moving on to the pathological classification. This is information including clinical staging data and information from operative findings and path report resected specimens. A patient may only qualify for a pathological stage if the surgery is performed before radiation and or systemic therapy. So let's look at the T category. This includes clinical stage information with definitive surgical treatment information specified in the specific primary site chapter. The N category includes microscopic assessment of at least one lymph node. M category includes the clinical history, physical exam, imaging, FNA, or biopsy of the distant site. Post-neoadjuvant therapy or post-therapy staging classification, the YC clinical. This is information including how much cancer is left after a patient is treated with neoadjuvant treatment without subsequent surgical resection or planned surgical resection. It includes physical exam, imaging, biopsy, and any other diagnostic assessment after neoadjuvant therapy is complete. YP pathological. This information includes how much cancer is left after a patient is treated with neoadjuvant treatment with subsequent surgical resection. It does include all the information from the YC staging, operative findings, and the pathological report from the resected specimen. So this next slide provides a chart from AJCC 8th edition staging rules. It does represent the patient care continuum with treatment choices and the resulting stage classification. The arrows that you see below do indicate the starting and ending points for information included in that stage. If you would like, you can locate this document to download at the following website. Now let's go over some things to remember. Time frame staging window is important for determining clinical, pathological, post-therapy, or post-neoadjuvant therapy staging. AJCC stage classification time frames match the points in time in a patient's care based on their treatment. All patients undergoing diagnostic workup for cancer are assigned clinical staging. If the patient's first therapy is surgery, then a pathological stage is assigned. If the patient receives systemic or radiation therapy as definitive therapy without surgery, or if the patient is given systemic or radiation therapy before surgery, then a post-therapy staging will be assigned. This concludes the Registry Partners December 2021 CTR coding break. Thank you for joining me and I wish everyone a happy holidays.